Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. Don't go away because today I'll be talking about a very important product. I'm talking about Orgoclean AG. As a wound care clinician, it has never been my intention to endorse a particular product. But today, I would like to delve on the mechanism of act, uh, mechanism of action of Orgoclean AG, so that if you're a patient and you're using this, you know uh, what its intended purpose. And also, if you're a clinician and you happen to be using this to your patient, you know how to explain to your patient. Soon, debridement is essential. Do we need to? Uh, to, to debride or to, re, to, to remove uh, devitalized tissue, necrotic tissue, or otherwise known as non-viable tissue. And an example of this, that tissue is what we call slough. Okay, so if you see slough in the wound base, why do we have to remove them? Number one, because it, it prevents the formation of granulation tissue. And number two is that it obstructs the migration of the epithelial tissue that your body produces to resurface the wound. And number three is that it also obstructs what we call the wound contraction. What is that? It's that it's the process when the edges of the wound are being pulled together by the action of your myofibroblast in order order to reduce the size of the wound. So therefore, it is essential that slough must be removed constantly. The challenge is that slough or um, even uh, uh, microbial um, uh, colonies begin to reform 24 hours after debridement. So if you have a patient today, you're gonna Debride the wound and send the patient with a uh, uh, with a beautifully uh, debrided or beautifully cleaned wound base. Seven days after, when they come back to the clinic, they will come back with the same slough that you removed seven days ago. And why is this happening? One of the reasons is that because of poor blood flow or poor circulation in the wound environment, such in the case of patients with diabetes mellitus or patients with uh, arterial insufficiency. So if there is a product then that could support debridement so that you clean the wound in, uh, in the clinic and again you send home with this product uh, to continuously clean the wound base that would be uh, a product to, uh, to have. Now this um, product, we call it Orgotel AG. So if I'm going to open this, you would, this is the, um, this is the dressing itself. It has the side, the brown side, and it has that side. So this, the, the fibers here, uh, would attract and pull the slough or other devitalized tissue from the base of the wound and um, uh, with the help of, with the exudates as well uh, it, they will form a gel that would maintain a moist healing environment so now if you see the brown part of this this is the silver component <clears throat> of the product the antimicrobial property of silver depends on its availability in ionic form Elemental silver is non-reactive against bacteria and therefore would not exert a cytotoxic effect. Only positively charged silver ions Ag plus are bactericidal. To become positively charged, silver must lose an electron. It can do so when it is exposed to an aqueous environment such as that which is present in the wound exudate. By initially binding to the bacterial cell wall, silver ions can prevent oxygen and nutrient transport into the bacterial cell. Later, they migrate inside the cell where they bind with the bacterial DNA and effectively inhibit bacterial replication. So how do you apply this dressing on the wound? So always follow your protocol. So, um, but uh, always remember to clean the wound or debride the wound if you are in an outpatient cleaning uh, clinic and you have the 
um, legal authority to the brain. However, if not, just um, I would say irrigate the wound or cleanse the wound with your anti uh, with your cleansing agent. Uh, say, for example, um, whatever you use, I don't really care. But um, uh, in 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 our setup, we use the bash or uh, the bash solution. Uh, after that, you get uh, a gauze and pat dry, pat it dry, and then. Um, uh, cut a piece of this and it should go oh so the brown part of the dressing should go directly over the wound like this and then you get a secondary dressing so the secondary dressing selection is gonna be dependent on the amount of exudate so whether the wound is moderately exuding I would uh, probably use another alginate uh, I could use a draw tax um, or any kind of alginate that you could use. If it's heavily exuding, maybe I could use a super absorbent dressing like the Keramax or the Zitvet and, and what there's other products that are in the market right now. So the next qu next question is how long does it, does it stay? So you can do a dressing change every day or every three days. However, this can stay in the wound for seven days. So it's actually economical, but all depending on the assessment of the wound care clinician. I hope you learned something today. If you did, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe.